Welcome. This is a short screencast that gets you started with the Facebook SDK for Android. To develop Android apps, you need a Java development environment like Eclipse and the Android SDK. For this walkthrough, we are using the classic edition of Eclipse version 4.2 on a MacBook, but you can easily develop Android apps on Windows or other IDEs such as IntelliJ. To install the Android SDK, go to developer.android.com and follow the instructions for your operating system. For Eclipse, you'll also need the ADT bundle, which is also available from that site. Once that's done, you'll see that your Eclipse environment now has the Android SDK manager and a launcher for the AVD emulator. Create at least one emulator instance and check that it launches fine. Next, you'll need to download the Facebook SDK for Android itself. This is distributed as a zip file which you should extract. Here we've put it in the home directory. Inside this directory you'll find a number of items, various readmes, a docs directory containing javadoc, and a directory full of samples. The bin directory is particularly important. It contains the Facebook app for Android itself. If you want to develop with the SDK on an emulator, you'll be unable to get this from Google Play, so you should install this APK directly to emulate a typical user's login experience. To do so, make sure your emulator is running and use the ADB tool in the Android SDK's Platform Tools directory. Use the install command and the path to the APK, and after a few moments you will see the Facebook app on the emulator, and you can go ahead and use it and log in yourself. Next, we can add the Facebook SDK and the samples to our fresh Eclipse workspace. In Eclipse, use Import from the File menu and select Existing Projects into Workspace from the General folder. In the wizard, browse and select the root of the Facebook SDK folder, and you should then see a list of all the projects included in the SDK, including the SDK library itself and all the samples. Ensure the Copy Projects flag is left unchecked and complete. You can now try the samples. Some, like the profile picture sample, are very simple and do not require you to log in. Simply press Run in Eclipse, ensure it launches as an Android application to your emulator, and you'll be able to see the pro public profile images of the SDK's developers. Other samples require Facebook login, however, and to validate their authenticity, you need to register your Android key hash with your Facebook developer account. To generate your key hash, use the key tool application on the command line. The full version of the command line is detailed in our Getting Started Guide. You'll be prompted for a password, which you should make Android with no quotes, and then copy the resulting key hash, including the final equals sign, to your clipboard. In the Facebook Developer website, register a new account if you need to, and go to the Settings. Under the Sample App Settings, paste in your key hash and save. The remaining samples which require login will now run. Here is the Friend Picker sample, for example, demonstrating how users are asked for permission to read their friend list so that a standard picker can be shown. Now it's time to register your own Facebook app. Go to developers.facebook.com again and click Apps in the toolbar. From here, press the Create New App button and give your app a name. You can omit for, the, for now the app namespace, complete the capture, and you'll land on the configuration dashboard for your app. This is where you configure app categories, policy URLs, and app center assets, and so on. But for now, simply note the app ID at the top and add your key hash, hopefully still on your clipboard, to the Android section of the dashboard. Also enable Facebook login and save changes. Now we can return to Eclipse and create the app itself. Using the Eclipse New Project Wizard, select Android Application Project and give your app a name, similar to the Facebook app name you just registered. Set the package name, perhaps to include your company name, and remember that. Then choose an icon, Create a default blank activity called main activity and complete the wizard. Check that your app has been created correctly in Eclipse.
Now return to the Facebook app dashboard one final time and add that package name and the class name of the main activity you just created into the settings. Save the changes. And now is also a good time to copy the Facebook app ID from the top of this page to your clipboard. Returning to Eclipse, pull up the Android section of the project's properties and make sure that your new app is configured to use the neighboring Facebook SDK library project. Next, go to strings.xml in the res values directory and add a string item to this file called app underscore ID and carefully paste the Facebook app ID in as the value. Save that file and check that the value is correctly placed in the XML. Next, go to the project's Android manifest file. In the permissions panel, you'll be able to add a new item. Pick uses permission and select the internet permission from the list. Then scroll down to the bottom of the application tab and add a metadata item called com.facebook.sdk.applicationID capitalized as shown. Its value can be a reference to the app underscore ID string that we set up previously. Also, add an additional activity to the application for Facebook login. This is called com.facebook.login activity, also capitalized as shown. And now, if you switch to the XML view again, you can check that all of these three changes are present and valid. Next, take a look at the layout for the main activity. By default, this has a text label at the center. Select it and set its ID to at plus ID slash welcome. And finally, it's time to turn to the main activity class file itself. By default, this will be very simple. Certainly check that the package namespace at the top matches what you added to your Facebook configuration. Firstly, we'll need to add some imports for the Facebook functionality we need, com.facebook.star and com.facebook.model.star. Also, we need the Android intents and text view packages. OnCreate is the main entry point for the activity, but we do need to add an implementation for the onActivityResult method. The session class is an important part of the login process for the Facebook SDK, and this method is the minimum way that we can hook together the activity and the session. Other samples show far more robust implementations. Back inside on create, call the, on, uh, call the open active session method on the session class to start the login flow. It takes three arguments, the final being the callback object that gets notified via the call method when the session changes state. This call method gets invoked every time the session changes state so we need to check for when it finally becomes open. And then inside there, we can finally make a call to the Facebook API. Another very important part of the SDK is the request class, which has a selection of useful convenience methods. This one, execute me request async, gets basic user data and passes strongly typed uh, user objects back to the uncompleted callback. Within that callback, we can check that the user exists, get a reference to the text view label in the layout, easily fetch the user's name, 
and update the greeting accordingly. Save this file, run the app. Your emulator should then show and your brand new social app will start up. It will log the user in if required, ask for permission to access their basic info, and then we'll personalize their welcome. And that's it. You just created the minimum viable Facebook app on Android. Take a look at the samples, follow through the tutorials on our developer site, and have fun developing amazing social apps for Android.